It is our firm belief that the 1945 law does not give the power to the governor to rule an entire state on her own as for as long as she likes. Mm -hmm. And we will be asking the courts to affirm our belief very soon. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky, welcome to One Detroit. Happy to be here with you, Nolan. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, let's start by asking you to put in context, to define for us the nature of your dispute with Governor Gretchen Whitmer. What is at the root of this disagreement? The root of it starts uh, with the end of the 23-day extension that we provided without conditions. Going back to the beginning, I don't believe when this insidious virus hit our shores that we had enough time nor enough data to do anything but uh, apply the heavy hand of one size fits all force of government. And then over the course of time, since we've done that, and, the, and I was supportive of that from the very beginning, but since then we've discovered that there are companies and organizations across the state and nation and the world that are proving every day that they've been learned to live and work with the virus, not be fearful of the virus. So we, we went to the end of that first executive order and she asked for a 70 day extension. The legislature authorized a 23 day extension without conditions. And we got to the end of the 23 days and there was still a big gap in between uh, our ability to have even understand how decisions are being made, let alone having a part of the decisions being made. And at that point in time, we decided that enough's enough. Uh, there's no more extension required, which does not mean that I don't think there should be a, a, a uh, resulting state of the emergency in Michigan. It just needs to be more refined and narrowly focused. And frankly, it needs to transition from a emergency declaration, executive order form to a regular order legislative form. So you're not asking for the emergency order to be lifted or for uh, the emergency to be declared at end or even a suspension of the governor's emergency powers. You're looking for more input and oversight? That's exactly right. I don't think the citizens of Michigan expect a single person to be making all decisions without their representatives, whether they're representatives or senators involved in that process. As I stated just a moment ago, I still believe there is a case to be made that Michigan needs a limited, narrowly defined state of emergency. Uh, but that's not what we're enduring right now. And we haven't had a chance to, uh, to have that conversation with our governor. So what did you offer? We offered to extend a week at a time, as long as we can participate in design, divine, designing and defining what the stay home, stay safe executive order is going forward. Providing input to it, not being the, the approvers of it. That's all we ask, we put it in writing. So Mike, it appears that the, the orders and the shutdowns uh, uh, provisions that have been put in place are working to flatten the curve in Michigan are starting to see a reduction. Are you worried that changing course now would lead to a spike? Not at all, because now we have enough data and enough information to, be, to know what to even measure. And if we see things occurring that cause us, cause us concern, we ramp up or ramp down uh, the restrictions based on what we've experienced. Uh, so now is, the conflict appears to be in the two laws, the law from 1976 and the law from 1945. The law 1945 doesn't really mention legislative oversight. The, night, the law from 1976 clearly does. Uh, the governor originally operated under the 1976 law. Now she appears to be going back and forth between the two and you've threatened a lawsuit. Are you actually going to court? Without a doubt, we're going to court. When? Uh, it'll be sooner than you expect. Well, I would but have expected. I've, I've, given, I've, given our legal, I've given our legal team these instructions. Mm -hmm. When you think we have made our case and are ready to file, do so. Okay. And they said, yes, uh, we will follow that, those, uh, those guidelines. And I'm waiting for their green light to go. And I do not think it'll be a very long time. But you've also added another layer to this. You've been talking this week about a petition drive to repeal the 1945 law. For the protections of Michigan citizens into the future, the 1945 law must be repealed. It is our firm belief that the 1945 law does not give the power to the governor to rule an entire state on her own 
as for as long as she likes. Mm -hmm. And we will be asking the courts to affirm our belief very soon. But I want to be sure that our state doesn't face this kind of abuse again down the road. Only the Lord knows, no one, when we will have another governor whose character could result in the same lack of constraint and abuse of powers we are currently enduring. Does anybody really believe that our current governor would sign such an appeal, or excuse me, repeal? I don't think so. So at this point, we're looking at, uh, when we look at emergency, the emergency orders that are now in place, we don't really know when, they, for sure, when they'll end. Uh, I mean, the, this current order extends to almost the end of May. Will she be able to extend it again using the same uh, maneuvers she used this past time? Well, the most important action that the legislature took last Thursday was an inaction. In other words, it chose to not extend the state of emergency under the 1976 law. Mm -hmm. And then within a couple of hours of that inaction, in other words, us adjourning, the governor came out and extended the emergency declaration under the 1976 law. And so if that isn't breaking the law, I don't know what is. So, so Mike, if you look at the situation in Michigan now, where the lock went down is, and compared to other states, mm -hmm. what do you think we could be or should be doing? Um, I believe we should we should leverage the work that the Jerry Anderson led Merck product uh, came mm -hmm. up with. I think it's a pretty darn good product. And the first thing we should do is we should apply that model, that judgment across the state geographically. And I believe about 75%, if my calculations and assessments are correct, of the geography of the state of Michigan would be free to go to the lowest level of risk activity. Mm -hmm. And then num that's number one. Now, we could do that immediately within a couple of days. Number two, we would refine the work of that group so that it could be deployed to the county level. So that the state then would be prepared to provide real time 24 7, 365 data. So at the county level, people could make decisions on trend lines and so forth and determine if restric restrictions should be increased or decreased. Let that settle for about 30 days. And then finally, after about 60 days, when counties are comfortable with having that responsibility, we got to give them the power and the tools to do it. Then we repeal all the executive orders that are in place today and replace them with more refined executive orders. Notice I didn't say repeal forever. I just said re repeal them as in, in the current condition, if there are any still remaining, and replace them with more measured ones. Those three steps, pretty simple. Using so what the governors have got in place. Are you talking with the governor? Are you talking with her team? No, we're talking with the team every day. Yep. The governor's team? Top, yep. yep, we're talking with the governor's team every day. You feel like you're gonna to come to a resolution on this? I certainly hope so. And we've been putting every ounce of our energy into it, no one. Do you think you could resolve it without going to court, without a petition drive? That would be beautiful. Um, be let's beautiful. switch subjects just for a minute, talk about the state budget. We don't talk about, uh, about it much nowadays but with the preoccupation with the virus, but you all are looking at upwards of a three, three and a half billion dollar budget shortfall in this fiscal year. Have you begun to address that at all? Are you in talks with the governor, with the House leaders on where you're going to cut three and a half billion dollars out of a 12 billion dollar general fund budget with just four or five months left, five months I guess, left in this fiscal year? You've hit the nail on the head as you usually do. The House and the Senate are working very closely. In the Senate, our appropriations chair, Senator Stamos, has given the instructions to all the subcommittee chairs to come up with their, their own personal committee prioritized list, how they would reduce their specific budgets by 10, 20, and 30 percent in preparation for negotiations. Uh, we've, got, we've gotten zero input so far from the executive office uh, on this. And you are right. Every day we lose here in, in talking about this, we lose an enormous amount of flexibility and money is being spent. And so every day that goes by, it'll be harder and harder to hit those targets to make a balanced budget. This is going to be brutal by the time we get to uh, October 1st. Yeah, the longer we wait, the more brutal it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Mike Shirky, Senate Majority Leader, thank you for joining us today on One Detroit. Thank you, John. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.